Happy morning everybody. I've just, I'm just going to work this morning um, on one of my beautiful native hawthorn trees. As you can see, it is around about 25-30 feet. So let's just introduce you to this beautiful tree. Um, as I say, it's a native hawthorn. Um, which is Cretaceous. Um, I've got a little bit of ivy uh, climbing up it, which I personally would like to remove. And look, I've got all of these um, healthy shoots coming from the base. Now that means that when you walk past, you're going to get attacked by the barbs on the, on the stems. Of the uh, of the of the young shoots, so I'm going to remove all those and really tidy up this trunk. So if you just have a quick look at this trunk, and then I'll refilm once I'm done. Um, also, I would just like to add. What I will show you them when they're uncovered. I plan to remove these. Um, they're plastic um, squirrels not even necessarily British squirrels. I think that one's a, an American chipmunk. Anyway, I've got plastic chipmunks and squirrels um, attached via metal onto this hawthorn. Um, and just to let everybody know, the reaction of any wood to metal being introduced into its tissue, into its, its flesh, its wood, um, if you cut open that, that um, part of the tree that's had that um, metal put inside it, whether you've just um, nailed something to the trunk or thought it was a good idea to um, put in um, a, a label to a tree, you know, anything whatsoever that you need to attach to a tree, a stake, a tie, please make sure that it's kind. Metal looks like cancer in wood. It, it's like black tendrils. It, it malforms the tissue of the wood. It, it's never okay to do, people. Never, ever. Please don't do it. If you want to attach something to this uh, tree or any other tree, please... Um, attach it with a kind tie, um, a pair of old tights some of my customers uh, tie things up with because they're very flexible um, and stretchy um, and they're kind, they don't bite into the trunk. Um, also I always despair when I see that something's been attached to a trunk and the, the tree's grown beautifully and it's actually absorbed what was attached you know, a tree tie, the trunk will grow round it. It will heal up like like skin. Um, and then, of course, you're faced with a, a little bit of a wound on the trunk. So think about that before you attach things to trees. I'm going to just get on with this little job or big job, whatever you want to call it. And I will refilm in a minute. Hello, back again an hour later um this video isn't going to be what i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to show you how you can um, tidy up a tree to still look natural and and everything would be hunky-dory and now i find i'm not going to say that at all what i found with the hawthorn wasn't what i expected at all um, if I come round here and show you the debris right uh, that is a lot of wood a lot of wood it's a lot of healthy wood you can see the lichen that is a lot of healthy wood and a lot of unhealthy wood. I didn't expect this to be how it is. 
I know I pointed out the plastic animals and I found another two hidden in the ivy that's covering this trunk. Um, the biggest disaster is this. Look. Look. It's, it's just completely rotten. It, it's just completely sodden and rotten. Now, this is where we're going to get real people. Gardeners are consistently, look at the state of that. Look at that. Look at that. So this is, I said, this is a native hawthorn. A native hawthorn. They grow everywhere. They grow in every, every around every field. If, if it's been left with a hedge, they grow into trees and specimens. Look, I can show you a couple of hawthorns on my pasture that, I mean, they're big. They're, they're really big. They can make big trees and, um, and, and they can be tiny, you know. Um, but this is ultimately what they want to be and for that reason um, most of our gardens are just too small to have a hawthorn but there are lots of hawthorns that are suitable for a small garden and I think it, it's such a magnificent majestic little tree um, please if you can have a tree have a hawthorn now, let me move on to what I've uncovered with this tree it is horrible so first of all you know those animals and i was whinging on about um putting metal into wood look i'm going to show you this and and this these are the this is where one of the plastic animals was was put into the tree and also down here this is another two okay here and here now what i'm telling you is this is a main trunk of this tree and everything was fine up to up to here and then somebody's put in these nails here and then here can you see that massive fat slug I do hope so. This wound, which has kind of spread, look, it starts down here at the base and it goes up. It's almost like a breakage in the skin and, you, and it's rounded here so it's kind of rolled back on itself and exposed what I would probably call the heartwood of this hawthorn. Now as soon as you've done that instead of it being a clear trunk what's happened is is this wound has appeared and placing the animals here as they were means that leaves, debris, um, everything gets caught so you've got pockets here i mean this this is this is like soil covered in um wood lice and grubs and stuff like that and and look it it just breaks off it just breaks off it's full of holes you know it, it's not hard so what's happened is is by placing those animals there this whole branch has become um, just a place of decomposition uh, and also the the tree has gone into its biological need to regrow so it's immediately at the point of the of the hurt here it's started to throw out multiple branches from the base um 
so that you know fair enough this this old branch can go the main trunk um it does no more than to send up um these smaller chaps um in order to develop further and grow because it's 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 programmed biologically to to continue to grow to survive to produce uh, flowers and produce berries um you know and carry on its life cycle so can you see the black in these and that's because this trunk also had an animal nailed onto it so what i'm saying is right down here and this is even worse you can see the nails here and again the bark has rolled back and it's it's just rotten it is absolutely rotten decomposing look what this tree's achieved it's it's even after that it's even developed further trunks and then i've got damage like this which is all jagged and crumbly just crumbly and because of all these tiny trunks I've got situations where there's whole pockets of, um, I mean, you could, it's like a pot. The amount of, of debris and leaves. So, yeah, I started this thinking I was going to show you a beautiful tree. And actually, it's turned into a nightmare of death, destruction. Um, now... Um, all the conservancy people and all the scientists will say, "Ah, oh, we need, we need rotten wood. We need wood because we need habitat for wood lice, beetles. You know, we we need a place for the, for all these things to go." And you're quite right. You're quite. Yep, you're quite right. You do need a place for um, uh, all of those creatures and insects um, to have a habitat. You, you need them to have uh, somewhere to uh, continue their life cycle, and that is great. But what I would suggest is you should have enough wood able to fall over, um, naturally die off, come to the end of its lifespan, the tree falls over, it rots away and produces that habitat for everything. So all the beetles, all the, I mean, probably millions of insects live their whole lives on um, dead wood. And don't forget all the fungi. You know, fungi are incredible. They are wonderful. They are uh, so diverse. We're, we're, I don't think science really has touched the surface of how important fungi is and of course that has a place within nature so of course that will again live on the dead trees we're not talking about a dead tree so this is the end of the day okay i found the edge of the concrete i don't know how far it goes but I'm beginning to see better things like this beautiful hawthorn. There you are. There you are. Good night, everyone.